Please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2015 Lee McKinney Distinguished Service Award, Men's Basketball Coach from Greenville College, Dr. George Barber. Um, I, I'm really honored and thank you so much uh, to the SLIAC and um, those that had a part of uh, you know, selecting me and, and allowing me to get this honor. It's, it's truly humbling to do that. I thought I would um, tell you a few things about my relationship with, with Lee uh, McKinney. But um, first I just I want to thank some people. Obviously I thank, thank the SLIAC. Uh, my family, we have five children. My wife is here. Lisa, you can wave real quick. Uh, we, next month we'll be married 27 years, and um, uh, 27 years ago when we got married, I said, honey, I really don't understand this this uh, marriage thing, but I'm a coach, so if it's okay with you, um, I'll make all the big decisions, and you can make all the little decisions. And she said, that would be just fine. And would you believe for 27 years of marriage, not one big decision has come up yet. <laughs> uh, of course, players and assistants have been uh, tremendously um, supportive. My first SLIAC meeting, I came and Matt was there. Uh, I think, Matt, you and I were the only two, maybe Chris Budge, that are still coaching. And so as we were on that table, I, I just was coming from Division One, And we were on that table, we introduced ourselves, and everybody said how long they had been coaching at Division Three, and how long they had been to their school. And it was, no kidding, like 15 years, 20 years, you know, 22 years. I thought, wow, this is this could be something special. I mean, these people have been at these schools for this many years, and the first time we had a Christmas break, we had like 10 days off, and I go, oh, I get it. You know what I mean? I've been out of life. And so um, it was good. But the, it's a great honor to get this award, uh, especially named in Lee's um, namesake. Uh, we were good friends and a lot of times people think of coaching as, you know, guys that are bitter rivals. And that's, that's just not the case at Division Three, and, and certainly not the case with, with uh, Lee and myself. And the same with all the coaches. We're all friends and we like to play golf together uh, if we can once a year. Um, Lee was a true gentleman and after golf, each time we played, he would he would pick up the tab for lunch. You know, I mean, he didn't have to do that, but it was it was just really, uh, he was a gentleman in that way. He was always humorous. Um, he was always the guy that you would want to sit beside at the at the coaches meeting because he was he was funny. You know, he cut up a little bit, but he got a lot accomplished, and so he had a real sense of responsibility. Um, but he was also a competitor with grace. Um, he he told me a story once where he said. Uh, uh, George, we were, you know, he's really competitive. We're all very competitive, of course, but he said, play at Blackburn, and it's a close game, and my team is down uh, a point. And um, they award two free throws to, to the Blackburn team. And, um, I'm sorry, they award two free throws to my team, and we're down a point. And so my kid is at the free throw line, and the Blackburn beaver goes and stands right, right under the basket, and he's stomping and waving his hand. And I was, he said, I was trying to tell the official, you, you, he can't do that. He can't, he can't stand under the basket, you know, and wave his hands like that. And the official didn't do anything. And his kid missed both the free throws, so they lost the game. And Lee said, George, I don't know what happened. I don't know what came over me, but I saw that beaver in the hall after the game, and I punched him right in the nose. <laughs> so uh, that's a true story. Uh, Lee told me that, so I think it's okay to, uh, to relay it. Um, but, but when he got sick, uh, I, I got home from practice one night. We were supposed to play Fonfon the next night. And Lisa said, uh, Denny called, which is Lee's son. And I want you to call, want you to uh, call his dad, want you to call Lee. And uh, so I, you know, I immediately called him and he said, George, um, something's going to happen tomorrow night that has not happened for 50 years. I said, well, what? He said, I, I'm not going to be able to be the lady. He said, I, I'm so sick. My, my cancer, he's three-time cancer survivor. He says, come back. That I'm so sick that um, after practice tonight, I felt so bad that I asked Denny to, to take me you know, straight to the hospital. I'm just not going to be able to do the game for it. So we made some ribbons and, and uh, had a special prayer time for, for me that night. And I said, I'll tell you what, Lee. I said, you and I are supposed to get together tomorrow for a game, but you're not going to be able to be there. I'm going to come see you in the hospital. 
And I went over to St. Louis with our athletic director at the time, with Steph Walker, and we had a great time. I mean, it's really, I think it goes up to the spirits. We had a good time. That's what he told me when he punched the blackbird, you know, <laughs> beaver in the nose. And so um, he was just a guy that you always want to be around. And, um, and uh, you know, he would say, you know, we're going to have a great time in Houston because uh, he was going to accept a distinguished award, uh, service award down in Houston and voted on by all of his uh, peers, the coaches, divisions and coaches. And he kept saying, we're going to have a great time, great time. And then it got close to the time he said, you know, I'm just not going to be able to go. Will you accept the award on my behalf? And, of course, I was greatly honored to do that. Put on a purple tie when, we, when I accepted the award. Um, the end. Um, you know, so he, he really represented our conference in a, in a great way. And it's just, it's a great honor um, and very humbling at the same time for me to be able to, um, and a privilege for me to be able to see this report. So thank you very much.